you know, just for the comics to go down there and not feel pressured with other people, blah, 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 blah. He did all those little things, you know. He's very, very fucking serious when it comes to that green room. People don't understand what a green room is. He took it to the point where you can't get in there unless you got a fucking code. There's no just walking in. You're not going to walk in. And he made it clear, like, agents and this and that. I don't want you up here. I don't want you up here commiserating, taking energy from these fucking people. Stay outside. Go to the bar. If you're not performing, and that's what a green room is. I love doing the Sony theater. I love it. I love it. I hope to go back next year. I, I fucking love the place. The only thing I'm going to change is what was going on in my green room. When I get down, I don't want to see anybody down there from now on. I don't want to see anybody down there. This ain't no fucking party. This ain't Rick James down there giving out quaaludes. It's just people getting ready for a comedy show. And people want to go down there and mess with them thinking that that's what... I don't want to see nobody. I don't want to see nobody. I, you're here, you're here. Take a seat, get a cocktail, and relax. I don't need to see you before the show. These people that come down, we want to wish you luck. Get the fuck out of here. I've done this 10 million fucking times. I don't want to know luck. Sit in your seat, and I'll see you afterward. We'll jump up and down. That's peace of mind, guys. That little green room is... So, and I realized it this week. What? When I was doing the Sony Theater, I would get there, and I'd be aggravated. I'd be fucking aggravated. Why would I... I'm going to make people laugh. What do I want to get fucking aggravated for? So that's it. I'm banning fucking that's it. That's the way they do it. When I was doing the improvs with Lee and all this shit, it was just me and Lee in a room. Maybe the other comedian just talking. All of a sudden, since I moved to Jersey, everybody wants to go to the green room. No. And I realized how important it was. I'm going to tell you what Rogan did. Not only did he hold the green room sacred, he put a chair by both stages. Because you have so much going on before you go on stage. And they'll tell you the light's on. The light means you need to walk up to the stage. When you walk up the stairs to the fucking stage, you know, the people go, okay, uh, you need anything? You're like, no, I got my water. When you sit there those last three minutes before you go up, that's your world. Everything else is background music. That's your last three minutes of alone time, of time that you could focus on what you want to say, what you want to do. You get over your nervousness. You smoke that last cigarette. You do whatever the fuck you do as a superstitious, and you go up on stage. But even that, and it's not a $2 million chair. It's a simple chair, just a fucking table chair. That's it. That's all you need. And he's got a pad there and a piece of paper. There's cigarettes. There's weed. There's everything there in case you need it. He's prepared. That does something to you. You know, I told people for years, I, I did a thousand fucking movies. These movies were on last week. A couple of you guys reached out to me, the Dick Van Dyke movies. I did two Lifetime movies with Dick Van Dyke. I thought I did one. I did two of them. And I'll never forget this. They didn't pay me scale. Was I angry? Not at all. That's what the job paid. They're a company. This is what they do. But the thing that made me happy about them was when you walked into the, into the fucking dressing room, there was a basket. There was a basket. Whatever, a bottle of wine, a T-shirt, a box of crackers, some fucking, you know, uh, Vermont's favorite cheese, tastes like shit. Yeah, it's the same shit. But just a thought. Just a thought. It makes you feel so much better. It makes you feel, okay, I'm appreciated. I'll work that extra 10 minutes. I'll do this. I'll jump off a cliff for the shot. Because they appreciated me. You know how many times I walked into a, a comedy room or something? They don't give a fuck. Listen, neither do I. I'm there to pick up a check. I'm not there to fucking analyze your fucking hospitality. But I make a mental note of it. You have to. You're making them a lot of money. You're making money with them. And there's some people who don't give a fuck. You go up to Nebraska. You go to the Funny Bone in, in uh, Nebraska. In, uh, whatever her name is. I can't think of her name now. She treats you like a king. I can tell you there's eight comedy club owners that treat you like a king. Then there's 35 of them that you don't even see for the weekend. You know, you can't even come down a Thursday night and shake my hand. There's all those little things. Rogan lives at that club. He lives at that club. He lives at that club. He's there to welcome people. You know, the fucking hotel he puts the comics in. It's tremendous. You don't have to hear people yelling in the middle of the night because everybody's trying to save 10 bucks. But by saving those 10 bucks, you turn that guy off. He's not going to come back. You know, that's the most important thing is feeling appreciated. That's all I've ever wanted to feel. That's it. 
I don't want you to kiss my ass. I don't want you to feed me grapes. I don't want you to lick my balls. I don't want you to do nothing. I just want to feel like you were happy that I was there. I mean, for me, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to go there and take your money anyway. But it just gives you, you know what? Next time I'll come here, I'm going to fucking write more. I'm going to be a lot better for these people because the club is great. And that's what makes a big difference in comedy, man. It's not the money they pay you. I can get, If I did this for money, guys, you're crazy. I did this to be funny all those years. And through the years, you meet different people. You talk with different people. And you see what works and what doesn't work for you. I got to tell you something. Fucking Rogan did it with this one. He really fucking did. And Austin, as far as Austin as a city, I didn't recognize it. I remembered a few spots. It's growing. They really, listen, man, growth is a beautiful thing to see. Some people don't want to see growth. Some people know what, what comes with growth, you know. Around the corner from where I was staying, they're building the biggest building in Texas. It's going to be a high rise. Like, you're not going to, you know, you can't see the state capitol from everywhere now. They've built so much in the last two years. I mean, they've done, you know. And it's going to be the capital for comedy. I I am convinced after what I saw this week, it's the capital for comedy. If you're a young comic and you want to learn the business from A to Z, I'm not talking to move down there to hang out with Joe Rogan. I'm talking about the cat. They got the key, creek in the cave. They've got helium coming. They've got Cap City. Who else? The Vulcan. The Sunset Strip comedy room. And a thousand other other places that do comedy. If you're serious, really serious about comedy, if you're just like, oh, you know, I, I, I get it. But if you're serious about your trade and about your art and you really want to improve and really want to see it from the inside out, that's the fucking town to do it. You know, everybody always, listen, when you went to L.A. to find riches and all that shit, most of these people that go to L.A. to find riches, they'll tell you, there's not really a market for transitioning. Somebody said something to me interesting years ago. When I got the longest yard, my agent called him to put me on a radio show. And the guy said, we're not in business of making stars. We just have put stars on here. I was mad for about 10 minutes. I understood that. I understood where he was coming from. And I got it. That guy calls me today to do work for him. I will not do work for him. His partner calls me all the time because he got thrown off the radio. And he's, he's an idiot anyway. But he was cool like that. You know, I don't, I'm not in the business of making stars. Well, that's the problem with L.A. Everybody goes to L.A. to be a star. And everybody forgets what they went there for, which is fucking comedy. Mm 